Welcome back, dear brothers and sisters. We are delighted to see you again on our channel in Christ, where we celebrate the joy of knowing Jesus and following his teachings. We appreciate your presence today as we dive into the scriptures and discover the treasures of God's wisdom and truth. Before discussing today's topic, let us pray, offering our supplications to God the Father. Dear Supreme God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sacrificed to save us, your pitiable children, from the fires of hell, please hear our prayers. We offer you our humble sacrifices. We accept challenges and suffering as a means to bring redemption to souls in the warning. We implore you to grant forgiveness to sinners who find it difficult to return and accept your merciful heart, so they may offer you the necessary sacrifices and repent before you. Amen. Today, we will talk about, Luz de Maria, never eat these foods, the curse has been applied. We hope you'll enjoy the video and subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay updated with the latest information. Join us and listen to this video until the very end. Type Amen if you believe, may God always bless you. Jesus speaks to his beloved children, expressing his love once again. He calls forth their emotions and the love they have for him. He reminds them that they were born from the glorious cross and are his very own. He emphasizes his profound feelings for his mystical body. He invites them to unite with him and his requests through genuine love, letting go of selfish desires, and instead prioritizing his and his mother's pleas. He envisions his disciples as vibrant examples of his boundless love, obedient to his commandments, abounding in mercy and sincerity in faith. Throughout history, heaven has issued numerous calls to humanity, but many have disregarded these calls. Now, as another age approaches its fulfillment, Jesus, in his tender love, urges those who follow him to undergo in a transformation. He reminds them that they are indispensable members of his mystical body and must change from within. Only then can they truly share love and blessings with the world. Jesus laments that people often keep his teachings, love, mercy, and forgiveness to themselves, a behavior he deems unsuitable for his genuine disciples. He emphasizes his forgiveness, having bestowed everything upon them. He calls his mystical body with strength and determination, urging them not to hoard the love he has bestowed, but to generously share it with others. Transformation begins when they focus on others and live according to his will. Currently, the world is rapidly changing, and the need for purified souls is evident. The earth longs for responsible, and loving individuals who will reciprocate the care it has provided. Jesus advises his beloved followers not to pay attention to those who reject the impending purification. He points out that human sins, wrongdoings, and disobedience act as catalysts for this process. While he is the embodiment of love and mercy, he is also the sacred justice. He encourages those who follow him to prepare their spirits, renew their senses, and pay attention to their actions, thoughts, and words. He foresees periods of turmoil, with convulsions of the earth, polluted waters, and widespread suffering. He warns of escalating diseases, and people rejecting his calls, instead pursuing various forms of opposition to Christ who has infiltrated modern life. These modern adversaries of Christ include new technologies, television promoting a lack of respect for life, cinema mocking his suffering, inappropriate fashion, and even contaminated foods harmful to the body, all without awareness. Jesus is deeply saddened by the rejection of his teachings and the prevalence of sin. He summons his people, especially during Lent, 
to bestow blessings upon all of humanity and creation. He emphasizes the urgency of this moment and calls for truth and sincerity in preaching, while also warning against the deception of demons and their followers. He requests prayers for nations such as England, Israel, and Brazil, nations that will face significant challenges. Jesus emphasizes that creation was once harmoniously bound with humanity but now fears human actions. In conclusion, Jesus calls on those who follow him to approach the glorious cross, urging them to break free from selfishness, inappropriate behavior, and negative thoughts. He calls for silence and inner transformation, seeking living temples where his Holy Spirit can reside. He reminds them of the immense power of faith and blesses them in this crucial season, sealing them with his precious blood. You may wonder about the concept of food pollution and its impact on both physical and spiritual aspects of our lives. The pollution I refer to is not limited to physical toxins like poisons or harmful microorganisms. It encompasses a more subtle form of pollution, affecting not only our physical health but also our spiritual well-being. When I mention polluted food in this context, I am referring to food tainted by impure motives, harmful additives, and unethical practices. It symbolizes a disregard for the sacredness of God's creative work and a willingness to compromise others' well-being for personal gain and power. Consuming such polluted food endangers our physical health in ways we often fail to recognize. However, the harm extends beyond the physical realm. It can also affect our sacred vigor, making us less fervent in reverence, less actively engaged in serving God, and less discerning in distinguishing right from wrong. The strategy of the Antichrist is diverse, and by targeting our physical health, he weakens our ability to resist his spiritual assaults. When we are not physically well, doubts, fears, and temptations easily take root within us, providing fertile ground for the enemy's malevolent schemes. So, how should we respond to this concerning revelation? First and foremost, we must cultivate discernment. We should carefully scrutinize the types of food we consume, examining their sources and paying attention to any harmful additives or practices. This requires a higher level of awareness and responsibility from us as stewards of our bodies. Furthermore, we should actively support and promote ethical and sustainable food practices. Our moral duty is to promote the well-being of others, including those involved in food production. Let us not collude with profit-centric systems at the expense of individual welfare. We must always remember that God is our ultimate provider. He has promised to meet all our needs according to his abundant riches. While it is certainly wise for us to make prudent choices regarding our food, we should also place our trust in his provision and seek his guidance in every aspect of life, including dietary choices. May God grant us the wisdom and insight needed to make choices that honor him, not only in what we consume but also in how we live our lives. May his grace and protection always be with us. Amen. Thank you for watching this video about God's presence. I hope it has comforted your mind and refreshed your spirit. If you appreciated this video, please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Also, please hit the like button and leave a comment below to tell me how you feel God's presence in your life. And make sure to share this video with your friends and family, who need to experience God's presence in their situations. May your adoration of Christ be a source of inspiration and renewal. May you be transformed by his love and reflect his goodness to the world. Amen.